Welcome back everyone. Zoe here joined by Mitch and Matt and we just speed ran through our first series here in the NA region. Let's see if the second one will be a little bit closer. Timeless Obsidian will go up against the M80 roster and Timeless Obsidian, well, we just saw them yesterday of course in the new meta. However, M80, we've not seen any of that. What are our expectations? Where will they take us? Oh, I mean... Uh, Parade should get Hawky Boy and W continues in 2024, baby! <laughs> you tried to dodge me, Hawk, but I'm back. I'm here. It's not a curse, mate. I'm on your side. I want you to get out of this group. That's what I have to say about M80. Uh, I, I expect... Uh, look, Hawk can play a lot of the different tanks. If LFO is playing, uh, you know, what we just saw with, like, MAGA-based compositions, I fully expect MA to be playing that type of play. I, yeah, on a serious note, I mean, we saw how this game sort of played out for you for, you know, Timeless Obsidian, I thought, it showed us a great performance. I, I do think that, you know, we are talking about an MA team that took it really close against Timeless itself, right? So... Th that's sort of worth bearing in mind. I did think, though, that the Malga comp understanding from Time Subsidian in, in the matchup against Nile Win was, was very, very good. We also, you know, have to ask ourselves, then, how does M80 look now? Because they are also another team full of ex-professionals with these skill sets that won't take long to really gel, to really come together. Obsidian has to hope that through their elimination match they had to play to even get to this one, they even had to undergo a similar process. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much just relied on, on that MAGA composition yesterday, right? Obsidian, that is. Uh, they, they looked really competent in it as well. They had the, the May added in there, and now nah, Edwin could not deal with that. But we know, of course, uh, that M80, they're seasoned veterans in that team. I mean, it would be a massive shock if they don't make it out, right? Yeah. I think even as stacked as time as are and have just been, like, the, one of the best teams in contenders for the longest time, basically. And, like, but, you know, essentially earning themselves fame from never even competing at that top, top, top tier. I still think there's any team. Like, the, the names on this roster, it's, it is disgusting. It is going to be, uh, again, the ultimate challenge for Tyler's City and to try and replicate the success of their sister team. And again, I loved what we saw from Dynasty, right? The Genji play as well, uh, especially on Colosseo, was really compelling. I feel like they have a really good understanding about how to manage the Malga Mirror and you know, mix the May in when required. And maybe though, I, I mean, any loss for them, I I also think like the, the timeless loss was, it felt like an upset to me, right? Uh, even yeah. though one team had a lot of experience together, a lot, a lot, and, and then Manny had sort of just joined in this form. There are a lot of elements here that have played together for, for a while. Uh, so it'll be almost mirror matchups. Uh, Except it'll be M80 playing the Sim versus Obsidian playing the May. So we saw them play the May the other day. Uh, Want to really kind of like split teams off, make it difficult. Right there, they see that uh, looks like Tread just drops a little bit further so down. Look at the Reaper! Look at the Reaper! And, and, and hey, they just follow the directly in. Yeah, it's, uh, well, that's Hydron picking up some kills with the turrets in that small space. Is uh, that, that is a first fight win there for M80 really fast. You see the kind of pressure this composition generates because of that sim tp throwing an entire death ball in your face you do not have the bandwidth to turn around and look at the reaper who's extremely good when he's right up your clacker well kidding with those shotguns pelican's also like one of the better reapers i feel like uh, we, sure. we've seen him play reaper in the past uh, a ton as looks like obsidian just having it's like rating people on how well group. they pour cereal right it seems like it's a very elementary skill set to have but you know, like a, a good Reaper makes a big difference in terms of sort of prolonging your own yeah. lifespan here. This is they they get wow. them low, they split them off with the sim wall, right? Like, and they just basically sit on the other side in that close core area and just do damage right on through. There's nothing Obsidian can do. Operation Look at the Reaper underway here for Obsidian. Again, they don't have any space. They have no room. <laughs> Lepta speeds M80 in onto them, and if they need extra mobility, M80 in uses Sim TP. They're gonna drop down here. May wall to try and buy a little bit of space for Obsidian. They've made good use of their hero in the past, but here they come once more. M80 on the way in. Trent trying to replicate the the charge in there to bring Hawk down. The coalescence here from Ultraviolet, it's a little late in the day. It feels like though that M80, like they kind of got what they wanted at the start, which is like getting that Maywall out early. Sound barrier for both sides. They still want to fight this even without Hawk. The charge came in. Pelican had to avoid it though for the most part. That Death Blossom could be devastating now that the sound barrier is offline. Theoretically, Cardiac Arrest also won't be available. Oh no, my 
my goodness. Okay. They're able to knock Pelican back for a time. Cardiac Overdrive is going to be there. And Dar with a death blossom makes him all a cardiac arrest. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say. I was like, I was like, oh man, Marcus, I'll go with cardiac arrest. That's a different. That's a, is it, is it I mean, the, the new I'm ability? sorry. It does the same damn thing. Uh, that, that's the the Arisa Cobra's version. <laughs> the, uh, the, so your dub just taking some damage, letting his uh, Moira just farm up some uh, coalescence there off that sim turret. But uh, that, that's a huge fight win there for Obsidian. They absolutely needed a fight win. That's going to be a sim wall and a TP to the point. It's Malgan time, says Tread. Charges in first, and AJ was able to build up that coalescence there just from topping Dove up. This is much better from Obsidian. Much better. I and Ultivite both brought down again. That glass kind of nature of Sim works against M80 there. Now the Death Blossom mostly ignored because Hawk is generating much of the threat on virtue of the sheer amount of damage he is dumping on Obsidian. Yeah, he pushes on forward, and that was actually a pretty good start to the fight there for Obsidian. Is you know, Dove was doing, uh, you no, know, making some nice plays in the back line, ends up picking up a kill early on, but. And yeah, Hawk, Hawk comes in with a big slam, Pelican there, you know, the Death Blossom on the point. I think I think it'll be really difficult. Let's see how they go about retaking now with this May. Uh, that's where the Sim feels like you have a little bit more flexibility in how you play this now on defense. With the ability to TP, go fast, get people out of a really difficult situation. Pelican on the point, that's totally fine that he's walled off. He can just stay alive. And so he does, yeah. Kayak Overdrive helping to that effect. Dynasty tried to push up, but got caught inside the cage fight. Coalescence from the outside here from Ultraviolet wasn't nearly enough to keep Pelican standing, but it's a trade of Reapers for the time being. Again, Bionic Orb deployed to keep Hawk standing. Left sound barrier now is fully expired, but Hydron is charged up and is hitting very hard at this point of the fight. It's gotta be tough for Dynasty to shrug that damage off here. And here's the wall. Now to play from behind and Hydron gonna be very tough to unseat here. Almost gets the better of Dynasty, but it doesn't matter who is shooting right now. As long as someone is taking damage from him, M80, they're charging up and getting out in the lead. Again, once more, Hydron wants to try and close the gap. Cage fight deployed. Only one player, I think, standing inside of that was Ultraviolet. Tethered in place. SimTP down the wall gives Obsidian the time enough to flip the point. And M80, gonna have to regroup. Losing Ultraviolet's huge shield, that's like a large portion of their healing. I wonder if Obsidian decides to like move in. No, no they actually M80 bail out where I was like, oh, maybe Obsidian can get a, like a speed boost, get, you know, take some players out. That would have been massive. Is Pelican still lurking here on the high ground. Death Blossom into... Oh! That's Long a big down. down. Man, if you bad, if Pelican actually just went for the Blossom there, it could have been massive to time up with that 0.4 seconds of stun. Either way... He gets it done with three there, dropping down a little bit belatedly, but still having high impact. Obsidian do very, very well to stay so competitive in this round, but they're out of gas now. That'll be that. Yeah, really close first round between these two teams. The thing I would worry about a little bit here uh, for Obsidian is that, like, this is probably the best May point you're going to get here on Nepal. Uh, so if you're going to commit to using that May and think that's the way forward, uh, this is one that feels like you have to win. I felt like Obsidian were pretty flexible. Didn't see him force May only. There's also a question of whether Sombra might have an edge here uh, against this kind of setup. Or maybe mirroring the Symmetra, but Obsidian don't really seem inclined to try that. At best, maybe to shuttle the team out of spawn. But yeah, like from Pelican's perspective there, that high ground that Village offers makes it really easy to flank in. Choose your entry point and have these big death blossoms. Maybe a little harder on Shrine, to be fair. You can't drop down to the point so easily. But you can still flank. You can still wrap around. So uh, Hawk looks like take a little bit of a off angle here. You get the sim uh, advantage in terms of the TP. So you get the point first here if you're M80. And then also, you can kind of have all these turrets set up. So maybe Hydron, I uh, know, get, gets a few of these set up on the walls. Makes it difficult for them to push on through. Hydron spamming just between the pillars there. Almost guaranteed to hit somebody. Started crewing that first wall. Trying to read down a half HP. May wall deployed. Hydron just sidesteps it. And then sets up a TP way in for Hawk, potentially. Dove has been annoying, but nothing really to furrow the brow of M80 here as the Reaper hasn't fully committed to the fight. Now, Dove back behind friendly lines. Ooh, that's the sim impact. Hydron and Pelican devour Tread. Yeah, and the, the Sim can actually build up charge on that Maywall uh, as well. And then in the last round, we actually saw Hydron build up some charge uh, on the cage fight. You can actually build it up on like kind of that like round shield that goes around where if you're going to just kind of let this Sim get charged up in the neutral and just kind of trade damage back and forth, 
uh, you're going to lose those fights in the long run. I it's mean, that is literally, that is playing in exactly into what they want. Charging off the main wall is really non-negligible here. Dynasty has to be careful about how they make use of that. Here's the Stompy Stompy. Tread may be biting up a little bit more than he expected to see here. Another main wall thrown down. Cage fire now, though, is going to keep all of them sitting inside this area. The Blizzard, though, thrown down. Hawk frozen up and left has the sound barrier playing from a safe distance and here it is the blossom will force the ice block coming out of ice block will be scary for dynasty but dub is going to be there with a counter blossom of his own and that'll be the fight obsidian managed to rest the point back here north of 61 percent for m80 yeah m80 definitely thought they had it with pelican coming around the corner uh, with that Death Blossom, but it was really nice for Obsidian to just kind of like disengage Dynasty, does a nice job, just getting into the Ice Block really fast, obviously negating a lot of that damage that would have went down. Uh, and then Dove answers with a Death Blossom of his own once M80 is like pretty overextended. Back to the grind. Pickaxe, pickaxe is shouldered here by M80, but they're going to get instantly caught inside that cage fight. The Ultraviolet trying to stay out of it, but eventually has to commit to have some healing impact attempt there and using the tp to sort of give you a way out it's a little late and pelican gets lost early i don't know if they're going to be able to make it out of this is ultraviolet gets quite low it's uh should be a big stagger coalescence here from AJMR. i feel like they gotta get some picks off of this i feel like you're committed to just kind of pushing through it oh, they're chasing 100 percent death blossom here for dove should seal the deal dove having a bit of a game here Three kills with that Reaper ultimate, and that will be enough. This gives Obsidian that buffer. Now, as they start to reach a parity with M80 in terms of their well, capture progress. Obsidian is better off in these fights being, like, hyper-aggressive and, you know, not trade... You don't want to trade with that sim, like, in that medium range, right? This is where they're going to win with this comp, is being hyper-aggressive. That wall might still be relevant, though. You can still dance this and avoid a lot of the damage incoming. See, M80's health bars, they are extremely topped up. Obsidian feed themselves to the beast there, thinking maybe they can drive an advantage by using a May wall to cut off half of M80. Uh, Doug, Doug gets Hydron. Maybe you can actually kind of like, you're not going to take the point back right away, right? But uh, maybe, you, maybe you don't have to give up a ton here. Pelican nice wall there down the way. Oh, no, you're yeah. staggering this fight, actually. That was really... Mm. I'm talking about picking your spots there from M80. They're a player down. They didn't have Pelican at the time. And they see a golden opening and uh, Hawk just plunges into the abyss. And now I uh, made it with a bit of an advantage, right? Gonna be last fight territory. And you're gonna have this cage fight here. Death Blossom combination. Trap everybody inside. Let Pelican go to work. Here's the call. Cage fight though. That's three players trapped at least four, maybe. Death Blossom now is a pretty dirty combo. You can't get away from this. Two for Pelican. Now a TP out of the Blizzard. It came a little too late from Dynasty to really counter what M80 were planning there. Tread's healthy, but no allies to help him whatsoever. Now I have to try and find a way to touch. Looks a bit awkward with the cage fight off the point. He'll charge in. Already down to half, though. And without Tread, there's really no chance of him sitting and mounting a counter-offensive here. They really need five to make this work, and they're going to have three. Yes, Dove uh, going to use the Raid Walk just to get to the point. This will be a sound barrier that answers the Death Blossom. So uh, everybody just trying to get onto heroes for high mobility gets back to the point here of your obsidian trying to keep map one alive. Doom in the picture now for Tread. That's it though, not quite enough. A generally competitive first map here from Timeless time and City, a little bit closer than I expected it to be. And it looks like their travails so far through this lower part of the GSL group have definitely galvanized them as a unit. I think they started to get a little bit better in the second round there. Uh, and maybe the, the first round was pretty back and forth. But I think like, you know, realizing when they have the opportunity to go when the sim is like a non-factor, I think that's going to be important uh, if they continue to play the May versus the sim, right? Um, King's Row, I think you can get good value out of the May. So maybe that's what Obsidian wants to continue to play. Yeah, but maybe into the last phase of the map, right? In, in general, she's going to be yeah. really quite powerful. There was one fight uh, where it looked like Timeless and City and had a chance to actually really extend their lead is when they took that fight with the May Wall inside that small room off the point. Somehow, all of them maybe were able to get through that wall, whether they yeah. break it or otherwise, and uh, they get a full fight with a sim wall in place. So, hugely slanted advantage. This is, I mean, these are the moments you dream of as a Reaper player. Nobody. Yeah, we did not give. <laughs> 
They didn't give him invinci- invisibility. Uh, he's just sitting in the corner, just putting down damage. It's, yeah, I mean, they're looking at the Sim, they're looking at the Maga and that type of situation. I mean, look at that Dove. Can't do too much there, but then the later Death Blossom plays off pretty well. Again, you are being forced to match up against Pelican. Dove giving a good account of himself over the course of that entire map, and we can see the value proposition of the mate. You can see what she offers you, especially a Blizzard, like a, a good counter option when your team gets you know caught in a cage fight or when you're trying to catch the enemy team in one of the Maldor ultimates of your own. Generally, like, I'm pretty happy with what we saw from Obsidian, and yeah, yeah. we might have a much closer series than we sort of anticipated. Just, like, using the transitive property where M80 played close <laughs> against the probably the better time yeah. this team, as far as we're concerned. Seeing this being this close is promising. I'd also say the sim wall was actually uh, pretty impactful, right? Um, we saw a few times where Hydron was able to get that off. Uh, just the the damage, uh, just kind of like yeah. That tech that is, is so good that you that you can grind a pillar and actually turn 180 without like being in the next <laughs> postcode is yeah. It's pretty good, man. I mean, uh, Hawk is sick at all it takes. Uh, yeah. So it'll be Obsidian on defense here to kick off King's Row. Um, you also could end up looking back after the main event and being like, man, like. I uh, know regardless of who moves on from this series, like both of these teams are, you know, top eight teams in North America, right? Like that's how kind of good we obviously know M80 is, but also how good Obsidian is currently looking. Yeah, and let's not forget, M80 really wanted to secure a spot with like a great team in NA straight away. Yeah. You know, like a lot of these teams started to poke around uh, in North America sort of after stage one had started, maybe qualifiers are underway. M80 obviously had a bit of a false start, picked up a team, didn't work out. It straight, went straight back and said, okay, there's still a lot of talent in North America. Let's build something new. We can still be a fixture. We can still be present at the main event. And that's looking like it's more and more likely here. It may need the win. It is a win. What are, what are your thoughts here if Obsidian decides to run this Sigma Ash on D? Uh, think- which looks like we're really far out of the spawn, so that will happen. I think the Sim um, could be an issue with the for the Sigma. Right, so the thing that we were talking about yesterday a lot was that if you can kind of create space between yourself and the Maga, uh, you feel like you're in a really good spot. One thing that can definitely eliminate that space is TP plus sound bar- uh, speed boost, right? Um, looks like they're trying to make a play potentially here for the Sigma up on the high ground, pushing back. We need to respect the off angle May though, and Hydron getting knocked down, a Pelican rather getting knocked down as well isn't great. Hydron does get picked off, yeah, momentum able to finish off that kill. Tread eventually gets overrun, as you would expect Sigma to do when all of that space is denied from him. But then there's the issue, the secondary issue of these DPS playing up on this high ground. Momentum trying to get back to safety. Still with one tick though, so M80 have the antidote to this Sigma poke composition straight away. It's not pretty, but hey, they're in a commanding position for now. No, and uh, you see it'll actually be uh, Tread switching back over to Maga. The hard part is, is like in the second part of the map, this Obsidian comes probably worse. Uh, like you have this natural high ground where you see Dub, he's able to connect with some players, but just not resulting in any kills. It sounds so pedestrian to say, but those all need to be headshots if Dub is going to have a real impact in this fight. A lot of them were, but yeah. I mean, just not. I mean, everybody stays pretty healthy on the point. So here, here's another thing. Does Dub switch now? Uh, you have Bob. Do you just kind of give this up and change completely, or do you hold on to it? So, I looks like the if it's worth it, really. I mean, if it lets you burst the sim down with the knock up, then it's probably good. Yeah, I mean, it would feel pretty bad to just chuck it down the bin, uh, but it also feels like you're going into this next fight without a Reaper uh, in a way worse position comp, comp wise. You really, yeah, and you really favor burst damage here. Like the Bob needs to get insane value here, right? Here it comes. Hard to see really what Bob got done. Maybe not place for a knockup, just for an extra player. Well, that's good enough, I think. Claiming two justifies holding on to that ultimate, yep. staying on the ash. It, absolutely. Uh, so I wonder if you'll see uh, Dub swap now. Uh, AJ Mar goes over to Moira, so that would probably tell you we're going to see Reaper. Um, We'll oh. see them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that'll be a Reaper swap. So, uh, it, it, staying on the uh, Ash in terms of getting the Bob out definitely ended up paying off. Bob ends up getting two in that fight, some knockup damage. Uh, ends up being pretty positive there for Obsidian. Cage fight here, sound barriers for both sides. I think both Malgar ultimates soon enough too. 
Tread took a ton of damage up front there, and now the Blizzard comes down. Who's in there? Nobody. TP. The antidote there. Or the anti-freeze in this case. This is a mess. Hawk Dog gonna get brought down. Caught right in the middle of that. Hydron trying to get some good damage in from sort of the card, but very exposed from that spot without the Malga in play. I appreciate the effort from Tread to time the stomp with the Reaper coming out of Wraith Fork. Doesn't connect, but hey, you get a convincing fight win anyway. Yeah, that is a double cage fight going on there. Lep ends up using Sound Barrier. I'm not sure it actually connects with everybody there. Uh, for M80, so another fight win there for Obsidian. So, uh, look, if you can, if you can, the, the faster these fights end, in theory, uh, is going to be better for Obsidian. Uh, you don't want to let the Sim kind of drag out in these fights. They're going to go fast here. It's going to be HAR using the Coalescence. Pelican! Save Pelican! <laughs> well, I guess Operation Look at the Reaper now is is actually paying off for Obsidian. They got the memo. They slap sides, though. And maybe he's moving away with a cart. So they yeah, they like the Reaper, though, here. Once Dove can actually close the gap, this could be bad. Okay! Dove! Hello? Gets caught in the Death Blossom and really not in a position to impact anyone else. The speed boost who apparently was there for Lep to get him out of trouble. Now Pelican's going to be on the way back to the fight, and Obsidian are down a player. Doug going to be switching over to Widowmaker here and trying to be the difference. Make a bit of sound barrier coming out earlier for M80. They need to turn this into a kill, but the ice block from Dynasty delays things. Death Blossom here's an option now as this sound barrier is expiring from Obsidian. But Pelican doesn't have a good angle. What is Dove in fairness? Surely hoping to pick off an easy a Moira or a Lucio. Just seeing the big bulk of Malga obscuring much of his view. Hydron playing that off angle here, probably cognizant of the fact that Widow is on the hunt. Hawk trying to push Tread away. Losing out in that damage battle. Eventually that cage fight's going to expire, and here comes Pelican with the second part of that one-two punch. Stun will interrupt that ultimate, but it's enough at least to catch the Lucio out, and Hydron's there for two. Yeah, and uh, obviously, you know, the Widow switch to just get back and maybe a line of sight thing. You probably would have made how long the fight went. You probably would have made it back on the Reaper, which... Uh, I, I think just kind of bodes the difference in that fight, right? Uh, Obsidian actually held on for much longer than I thought when you're kind of like trading these ultimates back and forth, uh, especially being able to keep Tread alive. I mean, with how, you know, impressed with him and the supports, uh, considering there's so much damage on the other side and you don't really have that big burst damage up close to the Reaper. Here's a Cole, wall thrown up here. Try and buy a bit of space for Obsidian, but it sidestepped. Tread brought down. That's Symmetra really hurts and this isn't even that late into the fight already hydron was so charged up maybe because of that may wall letting him get there early sim wall in play dynasty has to step onto the dangerous side of it as does ajmr it's the only way they're going to get the healing off that they need to and it doesn't pay off we will have sound barriers in this next fight but ultraviolet gets maximum value for that single coalescence Yes, Pelican TPs forward. I think once the play is close to the spawn door as possible. Has have an idea they're going towards that other spawn door here, so. He'll know. He's trying, he's trying to lurk for a big death blossom. All right, this should be a wash. With Hydron being the first to fall here, and he don't really have like a deterministic win condition in that fight. Yeah, Hawk will commit himself to the mechanological abyss. Yeah, they, they have to figure out a way to get to this sim early. Like right there, Hydron falls, although Pelican kind of like lurking in the back line, trying to go for uh, a big Death Blossom. Uh, doesn't really make a huge impact as all of this. They see Dove, catch him out. He I probably think he started checking that chased, spot yeah. back in 2015. <laughs> 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 They're aware. Here's double okay. cage fight. Large degree of overlap here. Hydron does get out of the blizzard, but not before being frozen. It's about keeping Hawkey Boy standing. They knew here's the call that's going to get him going. Straight into the fight, though. Tread was healthier. Wants to try and engage while the enemy Malga is low. Dove's Death Blossom is good for one. Pelican tries to double back, but disrespects the entirety of Obsidian stood behind him. Yes, uh, Pelican, it looked like he was considering the Death Blossom there when he was, like, surrounded by a few players, but they had the effects of that sound barrier, so he decides not to po uh, pop it. So, um, Dove up on the high ground yet again. Different high ground, though. See if he can maybe come up with a, a single kill here. A big engage here from Obsidian. Yeah, it's up low though. That's why he's been looking from the outside this. in for most oh, of this he, fight. He, he, he gets to isolate exactly the symmetry. That's need. huge. He's a death blossom now. Tread going to be good for two. That is big. Again, getting rid of Hydron early. The glass cannon nature of symmetry is a key point of weakness for M80's comp.
It's a, a few fights in a row they've been able to get Hydron out first, uh, and you're able to win them. I think that is a clear win condition here with these two almost mirror compositions outside of the May in the Sim. And maybe he has to get a touch. Eight seconds left. TP Risky the high ground. Oh, oh I love the oh, wall. Nice I love the wall of the TP. It blocks it completely. Hydron has nowhere to go. There it is. No chance to really touch. Completely stuffing the teleporter plan. Great presence of mind from Obsidian. Great May wall to deny that mobility. Yeah, it's a dynasty with a headshot. Right on a Hydron before you can even get through the TP. But yeah, the nice May wall knocking players to that low ground and nobody actually able to get towards that cart so uh the sigma didn't really work here on defense on first point uh they started to come alive in the mirror and then i think towards the end really like hey we're gonna use a lucio rush yeah look at that i mean that is nice with the maywall uh, with the sim wall as well uh they need to basically when they see m80 they need to figure out where hydron is speed and collapse like that is a kind of the the goal like you feel like you have enough sustain to live through some of the damage that Pelican's gonna put down. Uh, you don't have the sustain in the long run if Hydron's around. Uh, that's the big difference. Hydron's play style as well is so, in the past it was so flank oriented when he was like a soldier or a widow type player, right? He was often targeted. Uh, opponent, opposing teams sort of realized just how much impact he could have if he was let go in these fights. Obsidian don't wanna give him any room whatsoever. Hydron's not going to flank on the Symmetra, but if he gets caught at the back of a pack and there is like a, a Reaper coming in from a flanking angle, able to get to grips early, that is very powerful. All right, well, no, uh, no Sombras out of Cloak at the start of the round, so no freebies for Duff. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> you, you're still thinking about that from yesterday. I am, I am. It was, it was quite a moment, really. You don't see that very often. Very notable. Tread. We wanted a decent stop there. Maybe just uh, run around the statue and not stomp at all. Big damage, as you'd expect. Hydron again. Look where Hydron is playing. Quite close to the front line. There is a lot of risk associated with this play style. When Cardiac Overdrive's in play. Yeah, see, ah, oh man, I tell you what. Hydron a little too far forward. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, legitimately, this burst damage blows the Symmetra to pieces. No, I mean, the Sim is a glass cannon. That's exactly how you have to play this here. Uh, if you're Dynasty and Obsidian is uh, Maywall there by the hotel. Going to get another player split off. Now they deal with Ultraviolet. This is a really good start for Obsidian. I'm not... Yeah, it's a, it's a big vulnerability. A team like Obsidian who seems to be very good at identifying those key targets very quickly. They're going to really punish you for this. Hawk in the choke. That is a Maywall and you've given up the point. You've given up the choke against a May. What do you expect? Yeah, so I think this first part will be difficult to like break through with the against the sim with the sim wall uh, on the other side. But if you're able to do this, I mean, Obsidian sets themselves up to uh, tie this up 1-1. I also think uh, really give M8, uh, M80 some kind of things to think about here in, in the break between maps of like, what do you do moving forward? Here's that call. Ooh, Dynasty couldn't be seen. AJMR, they realized the May was low. But they couldn't get at them past the card. Line of sight for the Coalescence was broken up here. Now this goes from bad to worst. You commit a sound barrier. Maybe you think there's an opportunity to make something happen here, but Lep, okay, is forced to use his now. I think if Lep gets the whole sound barrier here, this is devastating for Obsidian. Now though, a little more salvageable. Not the result you want, but at least you trade those Lucio ultimates and don't force yourself to be at a disadvantage for the next fight too. Yeah, I mean, it's not awesome. Uh, Dove switches to, well, okay, it was like Ash, Widow, then now back to Reaper. Maybe thought he could just get a pick if somebody pushed up a little bit further. Um, you have to know there's going to be the what, cage fight Reaper ult here for M80. Some car progress uh, they're going to get here uh, for Obsidian. Uh, you're going to have to use this Blizzard to kind of counter those two ultimates, though, right? No support ult on the other side, uh, so maybe you think you're able to win with a Blizzard, but Hydron's been pretty good about landing these TPs uh, and being able to help players get out. Hawk there. They're trying to block him. Yeah, he can't get out. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. That was beautiful. Blizzard also thrown to cut off his retreat. Nicely done. You've got the Malcolm. What's next? Okay. Blossom from Pelican AGMR. Not ready for that. Somehow Pelican got air dropped. <laughs> Must have just got out of the gulag. All right. Dub able to find two kills though. And there will be a man getting cleaned up once more. I'm sure I'll let those still able to find one on the backside, but you are dealing with the Malga. You are not going to win that fight. He's very big and scary. 
Then he's about his business. He's uh, the payload wall round to the second corner, getting close to uh, you know, our second checkpoint. This Obsidian setting a pretty good time here and a big advantage in terms of death blossom, right? Pelican probably feels forced to kind of use it in that situation. You kind of feel like you absolutely need that fight win. So now I guess you're going to have this coalescence. Maybe you just kind of go on the back of both. Oh, look at that. Oh, get rid of the scene. Get, 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 get out. Get rid of it. It is so fragile in moments like this. Dove, beelines for the sim. It's an easy pickup. Two minutes 50 on the clock here for Obsidian. I have this checkpoint. You've got to be feeling good about that. Tread also holding I the cage fight. You do not need it, Hawk. Somehow staying alive because Malga. <laughs> Malga. 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 Finally brings him down. Sound barrier comes a little late. That's odd, but hey, at least you can try and contest. Here's the cage match. Uh, I love the way they've adjusted, though. Uh, we, we talked a little bit in map one about kind of like the, the sim and the ramp up of it. Uh, right there, Dove actually, I think, kind of like TPs behind enemy lines, puts a shot in the Hydron, and then they go with the Coalescence and take him out, where uh, it, it feels like if you just... It, it's kind of odd to say for Obsidian, right? Uh, ignore the Reaper, kill kill the Sim, and then, like, you know, the supports on Obsidian did a great job of being able to stay alive uh, through Pelican in the back line. That's kind of your path to victory here. Hey, matey. Gonna have to pull up something pretty brilliant here. Oh my goodness, they are so far behind on King's Row. Pelican there, has to get out. Cage match gets thrown down. Here comes Pelly though, looking for this Death Blossom. But again, with the Blizzard, that's just not an option. Somehow, Trent catches him there. And maybe you're feeding, positively feeding. And Tyler and Sidian gonna be, I mean, really making a statement here on King's Row. If they can pull this off, and they will. Dove found two already, Hydron again. First one on the kill feed for the rest of his team. It's tough to keep that sim in the action. Pelican gonna go for it here. And does buy some breathing room here for this M80 squad who are under so much pressure. Oh, this is man. a long time to hold, Matt, but I've seen crazier things from teams that include Pelican. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, Pelican coming out of the spawn with a big death blossom there. Is, uh, did we see him? Is he gonna switch? Okay, Soldier. so. Soldier. to try and control some of the high ground, potentially. Uh, Ultraviolet also moves away from Moira and goes over to the Kiriko. So some changes here for M80 here at the end. Two minutes and 20. Decent amount of time for Obsidian, but they used a lot of ults in that last fight. Enough time, though, for them to come around to another ult cycle peak. You've got to be feeling good about this position regardless as Obsidian. You have a great time make to play with here. You've kind of smoothed out your protocols, your win conditions here in terms of focusing and isolating this sim, maybe that's Susu for Ultraviolet is just to get sim out alive. Here we go. Orb and Cole, the classic one too. I'm gonna throw that into the churning mass of the players here, but AJ Mine doesn't have any great targets. We're tread down. You might want to call this one early. Save yourself the trouble. They throw a blizzard in there anyway. Can you find something with this? Probably not without the Reaper. No. I mean I, I think the blizzard is just in there because you get both support alts out. Like that's kind of the, the big thing there, right? You get the Kitsune Rush and you get uh, sound barrier out. So you invest that blizzard, you trade blizzard essentially for beat, you'll you'll make that trade always. Uh, and then now you feel like with momentum sound barrier, you can get aggressive, you know, sound barrier, cage, uh, cage fight, plus death blossom. Now you have some, uh, you know, Genji play in the mix, right? Just kind of you know, dash resets, put some pressure on Pelican. That's kind of how you feel like you win this if you're Obsidian. They may know what's coming. They have to know. Cage match here to try and isolate. Again, that what so on the points. Wall, double cage fight thrown up. Sound barrier crucially here for Obsidian now. Tread is low. He's so low and Pelican's gonna come in with the overclock. This is the thing to strike the heart. I fear into the heart of the most staunch mortals. It's Hydra on though behind that overclock that does the dirty work. And now we're down to 40 seconds. This is far from a certain thing. Time right, so Obsidian have to dig a little deeper once more. Yeah, M80 will have Kitsune Rush, so you're going to be going up against that. But Coalescence uh, plus Death Blossom here. Uh, yeah, Dub has to figure out a way to get in like a really good position here. Now Lep going to look to try and maybe just knock him off course. Here comes Amalga. TP was used there to M80 reposition adequately. Dynasty looked like he was knocked towards the edge, but able to stay alive by the looks of things. And Dub is too low for a Death Blossom. Oh, Dub! They got him! Wings clipped before he had a chance to soar, and that is going to hurt Obsidian. They don't have any time to get the Reaper back in the fight now, and M80 have crippled them. They've snapped their ankles, and the win condition for Obsidian was so clear, and yet just so hard to pull off. 
M80 pull up a ridiculous hold in the last phase of King's Row. Bro! Come on, man! Uh, Obsidian had three opportunities to, uh, to be able to really uh, get the payload over the line, and every time, they will constantly, they're doing a great job. They're getting on Hydron, you know, getting on Hydron, putting the pressure on the Sim, getting the Sim, uh, and then there at the end, they're just not able to do so. I think the Kariko swap, Suzu's definitely, like, you know, trying to keep Hydron alive, right? That brief moment of no invincibility. Uh, and then Pelican up on the high ground. You, know, uh, you don't have to play as aggro with that kind of composition, right? You can let like the Sojourn and the Sim in that neutral just kind of like ramp their damage. Um, and it ended up paying off, obviously controlling some of that high ground. Crazy, crazy ending. Truthfully, like the, the Susu is very powerful. It, it actually gives your Sim enough time to set a TP and TP through it. Run to safety. That might've been what was most important. Darvey was very clear was having trouble accessing the back line towards the end of that round. Now, the foundry phase of King's Row is harder on flank angles. They're not as good. Yeah. You, you need to walk through a corridor to access one, and the other you need to take high ground, which is normally patrolled by Lucio's constantly. So it's harder for Dava anyway, but we saw that last fight. He has to Wraith walk back with half HP and then gets eliminated as he comes out of it with a Death Blossom in hand. So frustrating here, but I love the adaptation from M80 to figure out how to protect the Prez. Yeah, the highlight there with the Widow, I would love to know if you, you, you had the Reaper there, how that would have went, right? Like, yeah. you're kind of coming down to the wire there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it feels like they've... You, know, you got to protect the Sim, got to protect the Prez. Like, uh, if you're able to do that, that's where you see M80 is able to, like, kind of clean up a lot of these fights. But Dynasty and Timeless, I mean, these two teams are so close uh, in terms of... It feels like in this meta right now in this series... Um, you know, it, it feels like, you know, one of those series where you're a few decisions, uh, you know, on either side away from it, you know, going, uh, the opposite direction where M80 finds themselves up 2-0. You could easily kind of see this being a 1-1 or 2-0 the other way. 100%. I mean, I am really impressed with this Obsidian roster. It was, it's very hard, I think, to really get a measure of them in their previous games. And especially against like Nine Wind, for example, where... There's probably a bit of a disparity there just between the capability of both those rosters. Here, though, we get to see them tested against some legends, frankly, uh, you know, of Overwatch and hold their own. Just a couple of little things, right? Composure, so important. That last fight, it could have gone either way. It's frustrating for Obsidian, but it has to be fuel as they head on to Esperanza. They need to keep some gas in the tank here to try and take this all the way. It has to be a reverse sweep, though. And I feel like the the May, like King's Row and Nepal, pretty good May maps. I don't know if I would uh, throw Esperanza in there uh, in terms of, you know, May maps, right? So maybe it's a little bit harder for Dynasty, uh, you know, to get some value out of those walls. You can definitely circumvent things a little bit easier here, I feel like, on this map. Uh, but, uh, oh, look at this. This would be interesting. If M80 decides to play the Sombra here, that would be a big change. Again, in terms of like limiting tread survivability, interrupting some of those like timed uh, abilities, like I don't know, a little ability called cardiac overdrive seems seems like a good one to try and shut down. I think ice block, like you know, you get the ice if like uh, the dynasty is trying to trade in the middle, and all of a sudden now thinks he can ice block and can't. That's uh. That's, that's one where the Reaper's definitely going to be able to kill that mech. I don't have the Ash here. And you don't have the Sim to run her down now. So, yes, you are now to deliver burst damage, but if you can consistently hit these shots like Dub was on King's Road defense first point, then there's plenty of value to be had here. And maybe you don't have a great way to traverse this distance to access this perch position. But does it ultimately, like, like so the damage you're putting down out here, right? Like, you're looking for a dynamite that you can, like, maybe turn the corner and capitalize on, but... Uh, it, it feels like if you're M80, like, you're fine just kind of, like, sitting here and waiting for him to have to bring the fight to you. Like, and look at where Pelican is. You can kind of see through the radar. Like, he's going to pick this bot up on the other side if they can get it that far. There's the dynamite. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty damn good dynamite. Duff here getting very close already to a bob. Will eventually be knocked from that higher position. Not hard to reassume it, though. 
They don't need to. Obsidian in a group up and push straight towards M80. Hawk was so low earlier on. This has to force a call. They've got no other choice here. I want to put him out and point out the Baptiste here for AJMR. So Obsidian really trying to abuse that high ground. Yeah, and, uh, maybe they think they have him a little bit low as that time Tread comes around the corner, slam Cardiac Overdrive. Uh, they get the Immortality Field on top of him, but Coalescence used by Ultraviolet. Uh, get rid of that Immortality Field, get the bot moving. It's a little bit of a change up here for M80 with that Sombra in play. Uh, Obsidian. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the Ash and the Bab can work in certain situations. I think when you have to take this like kind of fight on even ground, I think that's where you'll see it fall. He's the beat. Both teams have a butt to hack on Obsidian. He's punishing indeed. They're going to try and play around the Baptiste as well as they can, but eventually, yep, those healing resources run a little dry. Exsanguinated they are by M80 from Pelican Death Blossom. Definitely making it hard for them to get back into the fight. Now we'll clean up and we'll get that checkpoint. Yeah, and Hydron just uh, adds another layer of pressure on the back line, right? I think, okay, so Dynasty is going to play Sombra. Do you see... Dove, uh, Dove's gonna play the Sojourn, so gonna match Pelican, who's now swapped. So, uh, both teams want to move away from the Reaper here. Uh, maybe it's just like a little bit of harder for Reaper to kind of like traverse those wide open areas. Yeah, again, I think from this position, right, when you're when you have the first checkpoint, you don't really need to push that much further. You're quite happy actually sitting here and waiting for the, the team that's behind to come to you. So, you use Sojourn. You abuse the crud out of her. If you ever want to push further ahead, you can switch to Reaper or, you know, post the Sojourn up on the left-hand side of that next street phase. But Pelican's in a great spot here to be really annoying. Yeah, and I think what M80 wants is, like, obviously Obsidian to kind of, like, walk into this fight because Hydron's going to have a huge advantage in terms of EMP, but it's going to be Dove. Uh, Dove's had a really good series uh, connecting with a headshot on the Pelican, but... Losing your Maga, it's going to be difficult to bounce back after that. A little thing as well. Uh, Maga's cage fight persists after he dies. So, kind of frustrating. It makes it a little bit harder to, like, you know, snowball the advantage of, you know, managing to defeat the enemy Maga inside that cage. You're still corralled for the rest of your opponents to, to deal with. And then, of course, finding that first pick in a fight where they both trade those ultimates and walk into the next with the Coalescence locked and loaded. It's got to be good. EMP also online for your boy Hydron. Little, little loop around there uh, for uh, Hawk. Uh, then finds the way around the other side. Is yeah, I think they want to like get aggressive with this EMP, but also I think they're trying to you know find out where these players are. It's a big EMP from Dynasty, but he actually gets hit with a slam right as he's using that ult. He doesn't expect that sheer amount of burst damage. I think the Cole as well from Ultraviolet pounds him as he sort of has to channel EMP for a very brief time before it goes off. Is the EMP from Dynasty though? Well, Hydron, excuse me, having the second one. Yeah, this is now getting out of hand. This is getting out of control. Pelican finding good value on the Sojourn. More than happy to stick to it. It's just a lack of support ultimates here for Obsidian. That could be a real problem in terms of holding their ground. I mean, this is an awesome spot for an overclock as well, right? Uh, pr pretty much one straight alley that everybody has to kind of like push through. So it feels like Pelican. You can get like, you know, a kill. Uh, you're, you're in a fantastic spot as uh, Dynasty High in the sky there. Getting that Invis back after the Translocator just wants to push on forward. Treads too low. Getting really low, yeah. The overclock there, just that extra damage. I don't think Treads ready for how quickly his health pool is going to dwindle. Another one fight here, only overclock committed. You've got to be pleased about it. And that bunch should be headed back where she was. But, and the worst part here for Obsidian is like, look at the support ultimate. I mean, M80 going to have double support ultimate going straight down this alley to try and get a full map completion. Uh, it would be a huge message here at the end, a big statement win uh, for M80 to complete the map. But uh, HMR actually finds Hydron there with a Biotic Orb, so a uh, pretty big kill. It's going to force M80 to back up. Just to the high ground where they were before, so they'll still be able to abuse this positional advantage. Dove will slowly make his way here to the left and let me try and find a nice rail. Much of Hawk's bulk, though, is obscuring his field of view. Hawk, okay, uh, I'm going to pop that charge there, disrupt the shot. Not really a huge problem, but Ultraviolet's in a good spot to make a lot of use of this coal. Bathe them onto the bridge. One of the most linear parts of this entire map. Yeah, that's a great spot for it. I mean, man, <laughs> what do you even do? Four minutes and you're down basically the entire map. 127 meters. You want, uh, you want my honest answer? What? You spill a drink on your keyboard. 
Okay. And then what? Don't call a pause. Then give me 30 minutes to look through the rule book. No, don't, right? don't call a pause. Just, 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 don't, just don't do it. I'll let you figure out the rest. Dynasty taken down there. Here's that EMP. Angia, tired tread rather. Excuse me. I'm <laughs> misreading that, but he probably feels it after that. Poor kid to shove on Angia Mar. He's going to be forcing out that fade. Who knows the rest of Obsidian to hold up here. Yeah, trade with both supporters. Yeah, how's that beat looking? Pretty uh, sketchy in the right after. I mean, wow. Uh, in in what is a, a pretty close series up until this point, M80 with a clean sweep. They finished the map there on Esperanza and give up zero like meters on the other side. Yeah, uh, I mean, just uh, a wild way to finish uh, in what you know, King's Row goes down to the wire. We're like freaking out, could be. Could be one that timeless i know obsidian wins uh and it is just not the case there on esperanza i mean that is as one side as it gets obsidian i mean that out. one that one was one sided but i i do i do feel like the first two maps could have gone either way like i think actually uh, timeless obsidian played it really really close just yeah. a few fights away in, in the respective maps to actually take the series why do you guys think uh M80 were able to just run away with it on that third map. Well, momentum is really important on Esperanza, for example. I also think that, like, it's not gimmicky, but Obsidian are really trying to play into, like, the bridge control idea on this map. So, like, you, you push the bot and then, you know, to the checkpoint and then you just hold up there, right? You, you see Ash, you use the Baptiste, you abuse, like, how safely they can have a really big impact on much of the fighting that happens below them. But that requires... You still need to have people pushing the bot for you. You need to gain some ground somehow. And when you won't touch down, when you won't fight as a unit, uh, it's really hard to get moving to start with. And that's why, that's why they didn't get any meterage at all. I, I also think it's it's not a good May map. Like uh, we saw yesterday, they played a lot of May with the Reaper and the Maka. Like Nepal, pretty good. Uh, you know, even when May is not really that good, we still see May played here sometimes. Uh, and then King's Row, uh, a decent May map. And then once we kind of got into like Sombra and other different kind of like variations of it, it seemed like that's where like M80, at least to me, pulled away. I, I really enjoyed the switch from Hydron onto the Sombra. Generally, also, I was very excited to see him on that Symmetra. I loved how they played around that, just keeping Hydron alive uh, whilst being on that Symmetra, knowing that that's kind of their win condition. It's, it's hard. It's really hard to do, right? I think that's... Yeah. And look, at Hydron needs to be pretty proximate, like, to the enemy front line. And it probably isn't until the Malga gets picked off that, you know, Hydron can afford to be aggressive. But it's like the TP plays that completely shut down the Blitzed, for example. That's, like, one great, like, value proposition for, uh, you know, for the Symmetra here against the May. This is nice from Dynasty, right, to, to block off that TP and sort of stop the, the recontest here. But it gets really hard on this part of the map, I think, when you have these death balls running into each other. And in the second phase, Dove has like pretty safe and easy flank angles. And you don't have to, you don't have a, uh, a Kiriko earlier on. So you can't Susu your Sim and then just like get her out of trouble. I think that was a really subtle switch we saw from Ultraviolet that really paid off. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I think like, look, you had three fights here at the end for uh, Obsidian to potentially get that cart over the line. Uh, it feels like you had two opportunities where you could have won Nepal or at least like kind of at least seen that third map. Uh, and then you know, you'd probably replay the end of that King's Row a few times. You have an opportunity to probably, uh, you know, win that a handful of them. Uh, so you give a team like M80 uh, that much life, they're going to they're going to close it out, uh, which they definitely did on Esperanza. Here we go. I feel like they're still a little rough around the edges. So at times, like I... I, I think like playing this Malga comp again, it's like pretty chaotic. And I guess a team like Timeless Obsidian, who honestly are really quite proficient. I think that's, you know, they, they definitely want to hope to tighten that up a little bit. This team has a lot of flashy players. Like Pelican Hydron to me are flashy. Hydron is like the kind of guy who will take risks consistently. He will, uh, you know, like if he's feeling himself, he will go for ridiculous maneuvers and, and often pull them off. That's kind of why he's loved as a player i think that's why people find it quite exciting pelican is the same All right there's some moments yeah. like, think about pelican's hanzo on uh coliseo oh, God, i think <laughs> it was like that like, uh, i was like a dallas homestand or something like that like some of the most insane individual moments that he's been able to provide so this team probably are gonna be based on momentum because hawk is definitely the kind of player as well who seems to really benefit when the vibes are good and when they're not well operation get hawky boy a win can struggle under those conditions
That's why I was so excited for M80 in our just previous meta because there were such good opportunities for individual pop-up moments. Whereas in this Morga meta, I think it's a lot harder to do just that and you have to play more as a unit. For now though, they managed to get the dub and that's all that matters. Let's actually chat to Hydron as he will be joining us for a quick chat after this series. Hydron, always great to see you. Congratulations, how are you doing? Thank you, appreciate it. I'm doing uh, better now, so appreciate it. <laughs> Got the kind of revenge by proxy since it's another timeless team, right? So that, that will that will count for now. Uh, obviously, there were moments uh, looking at King's Row where Obsidian made you work for it. That could have gone either way with just one or two more team fights in Obsidian's favor. Uh, why do you feel they managed to play it close, and what adjustments were required from you guys to edge it out? I don't know, man. They were like cheesing. They were like sending a river behind, like focusing me. Like I get it. I know I'm that good, but like you know. Is honest. Uh, but honestly, I think we won because they choked. Because uh, they just started swapping Genji, same A. Like I think they got the nerves. So uh, appreciate them for that. Do you feel like, <laughs> do you feel like the the sim look is the best one in this Malga comp? Obviously, it seems like pretty powerful uh, until. You get like a mega dove by dove every single fight. Like, is there? Do you have to adjust to that? Like, is there a? You know, like, there's like a Kiriko switch from Ultraviolet. There is. Are they trying to suzu you, keep you alive, so you don't just insta die to Reaper? Like, is there an adjustment there, or you just kind of let them do their thing and, like you said, uh, let them choke it out? Uh, you know, May on King's Row might be pretty good. So we kind of need like a suzu or something to get out of that predicament. I was trying to TP out of them, uh, but it wasn't really working so something needed to change and uh yeah Pelly and uh uv swap accordingly nice uh, so uh, we see you pick up the sombra look here uh towards the end on esperanza uh works out great so lands up uh closing the deal for you guys uh students of the game will be your first opponent in the main event uh initial thoughts on going up against them uh, i know next week yeah i mean they're gonna have to really careful as i'm really known for my somber here so they're gonna have to really watch out for that and uh yeah i think it'll be fun i have some friends in the enemy team so uh that'll be a a nice win and oh, okay there's already a already a win in the books i like that hydrant <laughs> that's the confidence we we know from you uh well we wish you best of luck of course uh, in your matches next week can't wait to see more from you and this squad thank you so much for taking the time for a chat appreciate it have a good one guys